Hi, I'm Sylvia Kong. I'm a home economist and a cookbook author. Today, I'm going to be making pork burgers. Now, they're not just any regular pork burger, they're Caesar pork burgers. Now, if you love Caesar salad and you love pork burgers, I'm doing a mix up and we're going to have a really delicious meal. Now, as I mentioned, we're using pork today. You know, pork is a lean choice and it's a quality protein full of nutrients such as iron, zinc, and B vitamins. So let's get started. In my bowl already, I've got some ground pork and I'm going to add some crushed croutons. Now these are garlic parmesan croutons. You might be able to see that I've got some brown bits in here too. And um, what happens is sometimes the mix, depending on the brand, they'll have uh, a darker brown bread and uh, you know, so it's all good, it all tastes good. So you just use a rolling pin, put it, these into the bag. We'll use a rolling pin or the bottom of a heavy pot to give them a crush. They don't all have to be nice and evenly crushed. Having a few bits in here is actually really tasty. I've got some Parmesan cheese and I've got some shallots, some chopped shallots. And of course, I've got some special ingredients to really boost up the flavor of these burgers. I've got some chopped bacon. Oh, I guess I need to just scoop that out. And I've got some Caesar dressing. So these things are really going to add so much more. Now I just want to use a portion of that because I'm going to need that later for the burger when we come to eat it. And I've got some Worcester sauce. So when it comes to making burgers, I like to use my hands and just get right in there because it uh, gives me a chance to really distribute the ingredients very nicely and still be gentle with the patties. Because if you compress your burger or your, your ground meat too much, oops, you know me, I am not neat in the kitchen, but hey, it's all about having fun in the kitchen and ending up with a great meal that you can enjoy with your family. So this is looking pretty good here. And okay, just a little bit more because I just want to make sure every bite of that burger gets all the deliciousness. Now at this point, this particular recipe, it serves four people. And I'm just going to pat this out into a circle like so. You can measure your burgers on a scale or you can use a measuring cup to make sure they're all nice and even. But personally, I just like to make it simple. I patted it sort of into a rough circle and then I'm just using my fingertips to create, well, sort of, to create four fairly even sized quarters here. And then I'm gonna roll this up here. Now, when you're making burgers, what happens is the edges tend to cook much faster than the center. And what happens is you get a burger that ends up looking just like this when it's done. It looks like a little half baseball. That is not what we want. So the best thing to do is to flatten it out a little bit and to make a dimple into the center with your thumb or your finger, or you can even make a complete hole into the center. And uh, that way the meat gets cooked all the way through to the middle and you don't have that large hump here, which makes it really hard. Once you assemble the burger, it's hard to bite into and it's hard for all the toppings to stay together. So I'm gonna put that on here. Now, the recipe does say to cook it outside on the barbecue grill, and that is perfectly great. But the weather is not always conducive to standing outside and barbecuing. You know, we do love to barbecue all year round, but sometimes if it's raining heavily, that's not what you, where you wanna be standing. So I love to hear the sizzle of this burger. And I just got a griddle pan that's been heating up for a couple minutes here. And Make a hole in the center. And I will be pressing them, them down just a little bit uh, as it cooks here. But I don't want to squish it down too much because I want all the juiciness to stay inside the burger and all that with all that great flavor. Yeah. They will shrink a little bit as they're cooking. So I'll have plenty of space in here uh, after that. So these will be cooking for about five minutes on one side. Then I'll flip them over and cook them another five minutes. I just want to tell you a little bit about um, Make Ahead. This is a perfect recipe, like if you're making a recipe for tonight's dinner, you can definitely, since you've messed up all these dishes, make a second batch or even a third batch and freeze those patties. So assemble them just like this, and just before they go into the grill, you would instead put them onto a parchment lined baking sheet, and then put that into the, put the patties on the sheet, put that into the freezer. Once they're frozen solid, transfer them to a freezer safe container and definitely you can use them for another time. When it comes to thawing that meat before you cook, thaw them in the refrigerator the night before, not um, not just not on the counter. We don't want any of that. We want food safety, we want everyone to be healthy and feeling good. So 
I'm going to let these cook away and see you in a minute. All right. I think my burgers are done. I just wanted to share a few more tips when it comes to making your burgers. I had a little glass of water here, which I forgot to mention. If you're making the patties and if you wet your hands or your gloved hands with a little bit of water, the patties tend to not stick so much and you get some better shaping that way. So that's just another tip. And what else can I tell you? Oh, the bacon. The bacon that I actually put into the burgers is cooked chopped bacon. And I just love to talk about bacon. I have a bacon household. We have debates on how the bacon is to be done, whether it's crispy or tender or, so it's like a, you know, look, a line cook trying to get bacon ready for the family here. So I've got my bacon here. And what I do is, uh, first of all, when you go to buy your bacon, these are tips that I use for myself. Uh, the package that I'm buying, I wanna make sure I give it a bit of a squish test. If it's a really squishy, watery type of bacon, I pass on those. I prefer a firm bacon that's not waterlogged. Plus, you can take a look at the bacon. I like to select the ratio of fat to lean in my bacon. A little bit more lean is what I like because I think I've got more flavor that way. But again, it's a matter of personal preference. But if you have time in the grocery store, take a moment to uh, consider something like that. The bacon, it was all made ahead of time. And what I do at my house is I buy several packages of bacon. I cook them all at the same time so I don't have to deal with the cleanup um, time and time again. What I do is I can either cook the bacon on the barbecue, I am looking over there because my barbecue is over there, or I can cook it in the oven, I can cook it in the microwave, I can cook it on the stove top, but, and then I save actually that bacon fat for using to cook with my eggs or whatever I'm frying that's savory and uh, my family loves that flavor. I love that flavor. After I cook the bacon, then again, I get my baking sheet, I get a piece of parchment paper, I line all the bacon so it's nice and flat, that goes into the freezer. Once it's pretty solid, then I package that up into a freezer container so that I can pull out bacon anytime uh, I have the desire to eat bacon, and that's quite often. So I've got my bacon. I actually took it out of the freezer. I chopped it for the patties. So here's my bacon. I just took that out of the microwave. I like the paper towel on here to reduce the splatter. And what else? Reducing splatter. I did use a splatter guard when I cooked the patties in the skillet, so that just, again, a little bit less cleanup for later on. And uh, I've got tongs here. Now the tongs that I may have used to, that I did use to flip the burgers over are not these tongs here. Always you change out the tongs so that uh, raw product, it does not come into contact with cooked product. So food safety is vital. Now the other thing is using a thermometer. This is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. I already tested, but uh, so my patties are ready to go. But what you do is you get the thermometer and you make sure that you put it into the center of the patty so that the probe has good contact with the interior of the meat. Then you take a look. This should register at 160 degrees and that has happened already. So definitely I know my burgers are cooked and ready to go. Now, when it comes to assembly, I've got my burger buns. You can use any bun that you like. I've got uh, Kaiser buns here. I like mine toasted. Some of my family members like their buns nice and soft. I like the crunch here. So remember that Caesar salad dressing extra that I had. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on the outside or on the inside as much as you like. And then uh, what am I going to add? Oh, yes, my lettuce. Now the recipe does ask for romaine lettuce in keeping with the Caesar uh, salad theme. Of course, you can mix up your greens. You can use leafy green lettuce in combination with romaine. It's all up to you. And this is going to taste so good. So I've got, let me just get some space here. I've got my lettuce here and you can be as messy as you like. And I'm going to get a patty here. Oh, oh I've got to get that right out of the pan here. Here we go. Oops, as you can see, pretty delicious looking on both sides here. And just a tiny bit hot. There, the patty goes down next. What's next? Oh, bacon. And I, I think I think two bake two pieces of bacon are required here. Then I've got some Parmesan cheese. So just get whoopsie, peel the few pieces already. Just get a vegetable peeler, and if you've got your Parmesan, you can just peel some slices on here, as little as or as lot as you like. I tend to like everything a lot, so. 
There you go. I've got that. And then a little bit more dressing on the top bun here. There you go. I've got my plate ready to go with some extra veggies on the side. And I'm gonna slice into this thing of beauty. Just listen to that. There you go. Doesn't that look, oh, I can even see the steam here. So delicious. Put that right here on the plate. And I think I'm gonna have lunch right now. <laughs> I could eat lunch any time of the time, time of the day. Anyhow, I'm so glad that you joined me and I hope you give this recipe a try. My family gives this recipe two thumbs up and I hope to see you again.